This has been the most exciting election in history, and it's not just because of the candidacy of Senator Barack Obama or the amazing social network-based campaign machine that he and his staffers have assembled, or the millions of volunteers like myself that have gotten together, made new friendships, and just made this whole effort fun. It's not just that. It's something that is an element, a company, that didn't even exist in 2004. That something is YouTube. That's right, YouTube. YouTube was born in 2005, and think about how YouTube has changed politics. Before YouTube, you, as a political candidate, could get away with making a statement to one group that you supported an initiative that they were advancing, but then tell another group that you didn't support the initiative the other group was advancing that you told you supported the initiative too. You can't get away with that because YouTube now forces authenticity. It was a major problem that Senator Hil Hillary Rodham Clinton had because now we can look back in time and see how Senator Clinton flip-flopped on issues regarding the Iraq war. We could see how a number of elected officials conducted themselves in the past and compare it to their statements of the president and say, hey, either in the case of Senator Barack Obama, more often than not, by far, you are authentic, or in the case of other elected officials, no, you aren't. We could say that you have to get your video story straight. And then we made it clear to every candidate that if they wanted us to pay attention to them, particularly if they were talking to us of the younger generation, then they had to have a YouTube channel, and then on top of that, they had to have a blog. And then as they were building those two elements, something funny happened. New media continued to advance with new social networks, like, for example, the rapidly growing Facebook and My, MySpace before it. So you had to have not just a YouTube channel and a blog, as well as a website, you had to have a Facebook page and a MySpace page. Senator Obama got that more than any other candidate did. And what's the so what of all this? Here's the so what. In fact, I think President Clinton said it best at a speech he gave at the Clinton Foundation fundraiser in San Francisco last year when he said that the Internet allows one individual to use their voice to communicate to millions and seek and cause change. That is what social networks allow, but from my perspective, it's even more complicated than that. In a new media environment, no one can afford to piss off someone else. Why? Because the person that you, as the elected official, or you as the CEO of a major company, thought was powerless, and you treated them as if they were powerless, can use new media to become powerful. They can use new media to communicate an injustice you've done to the world and cause public opinion either local, locally, nationally, or internationally to go against you. That's unprecedented in the history of the world. No one is a, the slave to the whims of a newspaper editor. It's why newspapers are dying. Because newspapers have not gotten that they are not the end-all and be-all of the gathering and dissemination of information. Now, and I think CNN has done this very well with its iReport system, the individual is the carrier of information. The individual essentially can influence the movement of society with the right video distributed at the right time, or the right blog post, or now the right Twitter post. But if you connect Twitter with blogs and with video, and with internet radio, you have a powerful combination. And not only that, you can do all of that for little or no cost. It's advanced the cause of democracy. It, it has helped the maintenance of democracy well into the next centuries. It's the most beautiful development in our society that I can think of other than perhaps sex. But then, of course, that was far before technology. But I digress. New media and YouTube and the YouTube channels and systems and companies that have developed 
since 2004 have been the unsung hero of this election. Without it, a man by the name of Adam Brinkley could not have started the draft Sarah Palin movement and given an obscure Alaska governor the visibility she needed to be picked as a vice presidential candidate. And regardless of what you think about Governor Palin, you have to give Adam and the people that have worked with them their props. Because this band of early 23-year-olds or early 20-year-olds could not have done what they did in the past. We're a new part of our society with new media. Because with new media, you don't need a title to be heard. In the past, Adam would have had to have a title with a, uh, a major Democratic or Republican Central Committee. He would have had to have the right connection or just launch this massive letter writing campaign, bring in thousands of people to get someone like a Governor Palin advanced to the position of being considered for the VP slot in a presidential race. Not anymore. It only takes a few people with focused effort to get something like that done. And even though I'm on the other side of the aisle, I congratulate Adam and his work. He, and I've wrote this, and I'll say this again, deserves whatever, or percentage of whatever wealth and accolades and riches Governor Palin gets. But again, none of that could happen without new media. Barack Obama's rapid fundraising system could not have been built without new media techniques. Indeed, one of Senator Obama's first staffers was one of the major first staffers with Facebook. It's no surprise that BarackObama.com is essentially a gigantic and fun-to-use social networking system where anyone, anywhere, can establish their own little mini fundraising party and charge as much as they want from $1 to $1,000 per person. Unprecedented. So, in closing, it's those systems that have really changed politics forever. And I give kudos to CNN, which has established the I report and also allowed people like me to have you know, a lot of fun and communicate a message. And then in turn, they send these nice little gifts like this um, cute, cool uh, bag that they sent so I can put my video camera in it, except I can't put it in there because, or in here right now, because I'm using it. Uh, but it's just amazing this election season. I've had a lot of fun, and I'm going to be a little sad when it's over, but um, it's, not, it's like no other, and it's certainly changed my life. But right now, go out and vote.